So Roblox has added two new starter places templates and one of them was an FPS system that was really great and I talked about it in my previous video and another one is a laser tag which has its own cool technologies that I'm going to go over but as usual leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and also join my Roblox group and check out my UGCs there but let's get into the video. So once you go into studio the laser tag place is going to be right here and I'm just going to firstly present how everything works. So this is what you see after you basically go into it and let me just do a playtest. And you can see that my character spawned in one of the teams. There is a pink and a green team. And there is also a timer and points on the top. And we have these weapons that were also shown in the previous template. But I already talked about these guns in my previous video that I recommend that you check out. I've covered everything from like the VFX, the view model, the customization and so on. But one of the things that I wanted to touch upon on this place is not only the environment, but for example, you can also see reflections. And these are not space screen reflections, these are actually environment maps, but I'm just going to show them later and for now I also wanted to do a PvP test. So I have to start a local server with two players. So I have this guy right here that's sitting on my other monitor. But let's actually see what happens when I shoot this guy. And he's going to lose health. And now it said that I eliminated player 1, and also there was a sound effect. And right now I also have one score on the leaderboard. And you could probably guess that this laser tag template is actually using the FPS system, except with few other additions like the leaderboard, like the score, like the map with the environment. And that's also why I wanted to cover the FPS system first. And also you can guess that there is a team prevention, so you can't actually get the other team when they are on the spawn. But they can shoot you through the door. So that's the basics of the template, right? You basically just have a template that's an actual game and you can just publish it to Roblox and call it a day. And for now, let me just cover the other aspects. And you are probably the most curious about these reflections. And like I said, they are environment maps. And these were actually added to Roblox some time ago. And not everybody knows about them. And they were actually added on March 2021, so more than three years ago, where they were released as a beta feature. And what exactly are the environment maps? So as you can basically just see from these screenshots, the environment maps are actually just a lighting technique of reflecting the environment onto a surface. And if you want to know more about it, I recommend that you check out what a reflection mapping is. And I need to mention that this is not the same as screen space reflections because SSR is a different technology that would probably be too much for Roblox to handle. But previously Roblox has been using the skybox for information on how reflections should look. That's why you have the environment diffuse scale and environment specular scale. And this sentence right here is a pretty good example showing why a technology like this would be good. Where the skybox reflection works pretty well outdoors, however we can't exactly use the skybox when someone is indoors, since it's, you know, indoors. And the rest of this post is basically explanation on how the environment maps work and how you can set them up. Then there is the reply to the feedback, what are the environment maps, where this is actually a first step of the future is bright for global illumination, which is like a system for Roblox's lightning and rendering, where they are improving the specular indoor reflection for metallic objects. Or all objects actually, but the metallic really benefits from it. And here they are saying that this is not exactly an environment map in the sense of environment mapping that you may know from other game engines. And it's only meant as a quality improvement. Then here are the examples of the environment mapping on raw materials. And even more examples with IBL, which is image based lightning. So this is the IBL on and IBL off. Then just more other important tips and also comparisons. And there is a lot to read about this post and it's going to be down in the description. This thread is still pretty active, the last message was basically sent 25 days ago. So I believe that Roblox is still constantly improving this feature. So now I hope you understand why you can see these reflections in game. And I'm just going to copy this part really quickly and just place it for example right here. So I can see the reflection a bit clearer. And I'm just going to show what happens if I for example remove the walls. So there is no walls right here and it's going to take a second to update where it's going to transition into this reflection. So you can see that it actually updates in real time but it just needs a little bit of time. And I need to say that it's nice seeing Roblox actually implement these technologies into its own starter places. And overall they might not be the best quality, like you can see that it's pretty pixelated 
But I mean, it's at least something and it just adds a little bit more realism and depth into Roblox games. And also the environment mapping is going to work with the different lighting technologies, like the compatibility, there is the reflection right here, also the shadow map and the voxels. But I haven't also shown how this map basically just presents itself from the outside. Like you can see that it's pretty nicely built, it's using different foliage, different PBR materials that are also available to get from this place. Like you can just for example copy this plant and put it somewhere else. But there is also different stuff like these rocks, other different assets like the boxes, I believe there are also some plants right here, yeah, where these models are actually pretty nice and high quality. Also these edges right here, where I believe that this is also modular, because we have these corners, these shorter pieces, also like the curvature pieces, so it's pretty easy to use them for your own stuff. And here is also a combination of them with the neons. And same with this camera model right here. And lastly these force fields that I'm not really exactly sure how they are made, but they also look pretty nice. This might be something like editable image, but I can really say basing it off of these instances in the explorer. So this build is pretty well made, and you can see that Roblox has definitely put effort into this. But now let me talk about more of a technical standpoint, which is going to be the scripts. And like, I'm not going to go over the blasters again, you can watch my FPS system video for this, but I mostly wanted to go to the server script service, and also the server storage because we have the laser tag template library that if I put into workspace and go to, this is basically the asset pack from this place. And like I mentioned, it's pretty modular, where you even have these doors. Then these are the different materials, and again these rocks, the foliage, and even these walls. So you can get this place's library of assets right here. But now for the server script service, there is the gameplay folder, which has the scripts, then these modes, which is team deathmatch, then an elimination round and team collision filtering. And also the scoring module, where the elimination script basically just tells the player that hey, you basically just got that guy, this is the message that popped under the cursor when I got my second account. But for the round system, there is the start round loop async, which is a pretty basic round loop, where you have these operations like the reset score, then here you get the mode, the timer, then you start the mode, spawn the characters, and then here is the countdown. And after the countdown finishes, you stop the round, then see which team won, and then tell the players that hey, you won the round. Then you reset the players and then wait for the intermission. So this is pretty much the most basic round loop, where you get the random mode from the modes table right here, which for now only has the team deathmatch script. And the team deathmatch module has stuff like the time score limit, then the mode timer, and then the mode start function, where you insert these connections into the connections table, like the eliminated event, where you add the score to the player, and then a logic to finish early if one of the teams gets the points. So after every elimination, you check if the player who eliminated the other player got enough score for the round to end. And then the stop function or the stop method is just going to clear these connections. And the team collision filtering is basically just... so they just won't be able to go into the other team's spawn. And the scoring is scoring using the Roblox's leaderboard system. And I already went over the validators, the blasters, so let's move to the local scripts, which are stored in the replicated storage. So for the elimination GUI, this is what pops up after you eliminate someone, you have the eliminated sound, and then you loop through the eliminated objects, that means, for example, if you eliminated few players at once, it's not going to stack on top of each other, except the layout is going to increase, and it's basically just going to appear on the top. Then you create the new label, you scale the twin, and then you basically just play the twins. And how exactly does the elimination GUI look like? So the sound and the template are stored in the script, which should later be parented to the GUI.eliminations. So I'm just going to put this into the eliminations frame, which is saying eliminated only 20 characters. And this limit is, I'm guessing, so the text formats correctly. Also, if you are curious on how to make this text red, like you can use CSS tags, for the font color to set it to an RGB and then close it at the end like this. Then the round GUI is basically pretty simple. Use the get attribute change signal on the workspace global to check if the constant and time attribute, which is from right here, where the time attribute is just timer, and then every time it changes we basically just update the timer label, which just works like this. So if I do a run test, the workspace is going to have the timer right here. Then you also have a round result, 
which is just saying victory or defeat depending on if you lost or won. And again, it's just playing some queens and setting up some UI. So let's actually just see how this screen is going to look like. And it's as simple as a victory and green wins, but I'm also going to just change the timer from the TDM mode to be like maybe 20 seconds. And then again, I'm just going to do a test with two players. And let's see the screen. And it says defeat pink wins. So it basically just shows at random. And you saw the effect and how the sun was playing, so it was actually pretty nice. And like this template is pretty well organized, like these scripts are easy to read, everything is basically just easy to modify, same with the weapons from the starter pack. It's as simple as just changing the attribute, and also stuff like adding new modes is pretty simple, like you could for example just duplicate the TDM, name it to just whatever, then go to the round script, and just require this whatever script, like so. And I'm not going to repeat myself over and over again saying that hey Roblox should add billboards to tell you how to do stuff, to tell you how to use different engine tools and so on. Because in my opinion they should just categorize it, like just change something with the new tab on Roblox Studio because it looks really like plain and boring and not too professional and so on. But there should be like one tab on the left let's say that has all of these different base plate, classic, flat terrain and so on. And like another tab on the right saying that basically just giving like game ready templates like the FPS system, the racing and the laser tag. Because these three just really stand out from everything else and shouldn't really be called starter places. Also considering that Roblox is going to add even more of these templates in the future, or for example just update the older ones, I they should just change something about this tab. But that's just my opinion. But again check out my Roblox group and my UGC items and that's basically going to be everything for today. So if you found this video informative then please leave a like and hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.